This is Max Williams with United Real Estate. And today, I'm in the city of Richmond. More specifically, I'm in Church Hill. And today, we're going to take a look at a four bedroom, three and a half bath home. This home is located here in Church Hill in a typical block. Uh, and the reason I say it's typical is because we actually have two churches that are right here in the same block. We've got one right here on the corner, and our subject property is towards the middle of the block. And then here to the left, we've got another church. Churchill is called Churchill for good reason. Just two days ago, I was in a court case and I was a witness. And part of the process is the courts have the witnesses all go to an isolated place outside of the courtroom. And one of the gentlemen that was isolated with me uh, spent the last 27 years of his life working in the proper management of poop. And when I say working in the proper management of poop, he was a state employee and his specialty was working with septic systems. So he was a septic system expert. And one of the things I love about real estate is there are so many different areas of subject matter and septic systems is one that gets very little attention from real estate agents. And, and this is the reason why. Approximately 20% of the homes in the United States have septic systems. And the average agent actually in America does about six transactions. So very few transactions per year are actually done by the average agent that have septic systems. Yet there is some very important information uh, that should be known and should be shared. One of the things uh, that I learned back when I took my real estate test was that very little information appears on the test when it comes to systems or components of a home. Most of what we learn actually deals with laws, regulations, and how to stay out of jail. So very little about actual homes is covered. Uh, the experience of an agent is crucial because as you guys have heard me say before, you don't know what you don't know. And I learned so much from this gentleman. Uh, we had five hours of idle time. So I asked pretty much every question I could think of under the sun dealing with septic systems, costs, maintenance, uh, things to avoid, uh, you name it. Um, I pretty much covered it with him. Uh, one of the things that was important is that the average person doesn't think about their septic system. Uh, if you have one, it's important to get them inspected primarily when you buy a home. Uh, one of the things that's tough to do in a home inspection is to actually look at the system very carefully. And, and this is why. A septic system is in the ground and basically it works or it doesn't work. If there are no telltale signs to the layperson, typically you're not going to know. So it's important to get a special inspector, in my opinion, to do an inspection on the septic system because that is one of the most expensive, if not the most expensive system in a home. A roof is gonna pale in comparison to a septic system replacement. Uh, there's no other system in the home that is that expensive when it comes to a potential replacement. So very important to pay attention to that. Uh, the other thing that's important is all septic systems are not alike. There are some systems that actually require monthly maintenance. And if you don't know that, then you have just voided your warranty that you may have had from the manufacturer. So it's important to know what you have to work with a subject matter expert to protect your interests. Uh, septic systems, of course, are not sexy. Uh, a new kitchen, granite countertops are sexy. So that's what a lot of agents concentrate on. However, there is no granite countertop that's going to need replacement and cost you $25,000 or more. However, a septic system will and can. So very important piece of information there. All right, here we are. We just came out of the first floor bedroom and bathroom. So we've got a first floor a bedroom bathroom. Great for somebody with mobility issues here on this home. The other three bedrooms, of course, are going to be upstairs. Uh, we've got a nice big kitchen here. The appliances do convey, including that stainless fridge and our front load samsung so those are going to be brand new one's going to go on top of each other uh the other and that's going to be a heat pump there in the corner now they have not cleaned this home up so it's a little dusty so please excuse the dust but i think you'll get the general idea 
of what we're working with here. We also have some LED lighting in place. Uh, our brand new smooth top stainless Frigidaire microwave. And this Frigidaire dishwasher is not gonna be blue. That's a film, protective film uh, that's over it. So it actually is stainless steel. Directly heads where your dinette would go. Right there, convenient in the back. And we're gonna pop out back here and see uh, what we have in store. This is a narrow lot. This home is completely detached. And when we say detached, that means we have air space here uh, between it and the next home. The walls do not touch. If the walls touched, that would be considered a semi-detached home. And I'm gonna give you a peek here uh, right down. There we've got about four and a half feet there uh, between homes. All right, I'm gonna take you back here on this long, narrow lot. Uh, there is alley access here in the back uh, and it actually goes to the right there uh, to the side street. Uh, so you've got a good amount of space here. If you wanted to put a, a gate back here, you could of course, and park here on the rear, that is an option. On street parking should not be difficult because uh, half of the block or a good chunk of the block is not residential and uh, simply belongs to the church. All right, we're gonna go back up and back through take a look at the rest of this beautiful home. Uh, one of the things to consider as well is uh, there are ways to protect yourself um, in the home buying process. Buying a home, of course, is a risk. There are risks associated with it. However, my job as an agent is to mitigate those risks, and that comes through education and through inspection. So we know exactly what we're dealing with before we actually sit down at the closing table. That's crucial because it's the biggest investment of your life and all agents are certainly not created equal. And I've said time and time again, all lenders are not created equal as well. So if you're a first time buyer in particular, you wanna make sure you're using a lender that has access to the very best first time buyer programs and grants. It is not a lender's responsibility to share those in the, that information with you. The good ones do, the ones I work with do. So important, important information. If you are getting ready to sell, make sure you let me know. We'll get some additional information on the selling side, how to sell your home for more money. And that's what my job is when I'm working with a seller. Work with you to get the absolute best price for your home okay we're going back towards the street this is the front of the home nice big windows there led lighting we've got the fireplaces here of course when this home was built these were coal burning fireplaces and many of them here in churchill of course have just simply become decorative focal points not much use today for burning coal all right, there is our closet. There's LVP on the floor here on this level and the first level as well. I've got a gorgeous double vanity. I love the light fixtures here. You can see light pours into this space. We've got ceramic tile here at the tub shower all the way to the ceiling and LED lighting in here as well. I love this layout because if you had a multi-generational family and uh, someone wanted to stay downstairs, have their own ensuite, they could of course do that. And then of course, the same thing up here on the second level. Okay, if you've been watching for any period of time, you know that in some of these older homes, they have bedrooms with no closets. So that's why you see that closet that was actually installed there in the corner. This home was built and they did not have traditional closets in it. And that's why they did that. An appraiser in this area would still count that as a bedroom, even if they didn't install it, because it would be very common in the neighborhood. Okay, this is gonna be our hall bath here on the second level. Once again, we have another double vanity, very good bathroom sizes in this home. Uh, in many of the older homes, we see a tiny hall bath or a tiny ensuite. They did a really good job with the space allocation here in this beautiful home. 
Our most conservative bedroom here is on the rear. This, of course, we're at the back of the home. Got that ceiling fan and natural light once again flows in. These are gonna be replacement windows. So this home should be pretty efficient from that standpoint. And some additional LED lighting here in the hallway. All right, that is going to do it for this beauty. I guarantee you, if you watch videos all day today, you're not gonna see not one other video that talks about poop management. If you have any questions about this or any other home in the market, my name is Max Williams. It'd be my honor to help. I can be reached on Facebook under Richmond Area Foreclosures on YouTube under my name, Max Williams Realtor. Please be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks so much for taking the tour. Y'all be safe. Have a great day.